to Premier Number 9 of Introduction to Meditation and Introduction to the Internal Map of Reality. These premier sessions on Wednesday evenings are designed to give you both an introduction to some of the core concepts related to meditation that you don't normally run into. The idea is to make it accessible and uh, to prepare you for doing uh, your own a long-term, lifelong meditation practice. And the internal map of reality is to give you a deeper look into how you can take control of your own internal mechanisms that drive your subconscious. Your subconscious is reading a script, and the script is your internal map, which you have designed and then forgot that you designed it. So some good news. Uh, I've been talking and communicating with Rose. She's getting stronger and recovering from her surgery. And um, my understanding is Rose will be running the earlier premieres from, uh, from 1 to 8 on her main channel. And that we will run these on Wednesday evenings on her main channel as well. In the interim, uh, Rose and I plan on doing some... Uh, pre-recorded sessions between her and I discussing different topics. And then when she has enough time and is strong enough, we'll go back to doing her live. So we're moving towards getting Rose back and do it one step at a time. Now, what do we have in store for you tonight? Well, as normal, we have our one-minute meditation practice. And this is an excellent tool for building your own personal power frame so you can get into a very, very, very um, meditative, strong meditative states within a few seconds. Okay? I often tell the story where I had to get a cardiogram and the technician had me lay down and he strapped me up with all the different wires and he was looking at the monitor and he said to me, okay, uh, Mr. Oliver, you can now just relax and I said, okay. And he looked at me and he said, wow, that was fast. So he saw that all of my vital signals flipped from being fairly high beta right down into alpha very, very quickly. This you can do too. Okay, so after our one-minute meditation, we'll do a part six, session six, part one, brand new, the three realms. And we have three realms that we operate in. We have a conscious day-to-day -day realm that we're aware, we think we do things in. But this is actually our smaller uh, realm. We have a much larger realm, which is unconscious. We're not consciously aware of it. And it ties into our subconscious. So our sub subconscious is the link between our conscious world and our unconscious world. And then finally, we have something that many people call your greater awareness or your greater self or the universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it, but there's a greater realm beyond which we interact with. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll do our guided meditation. We're going to do the body meditation again. And you can practice um, non-interfering with your body. So be able to look at something in a very calm, relaxed way and not interfere. And then you will notice that when you put your attention to your body, it does something, it responds, but you don't consciously do it. Okay? So this is a great meditation for building that ability. Then after that, we'll go into the Internal Map of Reality, Session 5, Part three, uh, the timeline. This is the wrap up on the timeline. We've done all of the filters and talked about that in great detail. So now we're going to go to the main meat of the topic, which is healing and cleansing your timeline. And we have an exercise, exercise 12, which we will explain to you how to, what the nuts and bolts of uh, cleaning your timeline is. And then finally, as a bonus topic, bonus topic 11 is a topic that you may be aware of, something called self-talk, and sometimes referred to as monkey brain. Okay, so that's the lineup for this evening. 
and I uh, appreciate you being here. So stay tuned. We're going to go into our one minute meditation now. And welcome to Introduction to Meditation, Session 6, Part 1, The Three Realms. So we'll be entering into a new area here, this is a new section, and it has to do with how we process our, our spheres of influence or our, our realms. Um, up till now, we've been zipping along we did in session one we did a little review of the history of meditation looking at its sources and then uh, in session two we did a little comparison looking at how western society views meditation and how it was integrated how the eastern views were integrated into the western then we looked at, in session three, the relaxation response, and we realized that there was two nervous systems that had to be balanced, and they had different roles, and they were not under your direct control. They were autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic response for the fight or flight, and the parasympathetic response for the rest and relaxation and digestion. Then in four, we did a left-right brain balance analysis. And then in five, we looked at the frequencies of the brain. And now we are in session six, more than halfway through. And we're going to be looking at the three realms. After we finish se session six, we'll be going on to looking at actual causing change. We'll be looking at the process of conscious change and then what happens when you actually create change, the chaos, the chaos and reorganization phase? Then we'll take a little break and do uh, um, a little unit on deep breathing. And then we'll wrap it up with a discussion and looking at different ways for you to build your own personal practice. The resources remain pretty much the same. We'll be still doing these on weeknights, Wednesday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern. And the, all the videos are available for you to play later. If you can't find them for whatever reason, just let me know. And then, of course, there is the Facebook group, NSTCMA, Nova Scotia Tai Chi and Meditation Association. Members will receive all the exercises uh, you can be at three levels, $5 a month, discussion group level, $10 a month for the internal map reality course, and then $20 a month for those who wish to pursue it to the extent where they not only know about it, but they can do it for themselves and maybe teach and work with others. So what are we going to be doing in the three realms? Well, we'll do a little review, and this will be in the first section. And then as we proceed further, we'll be looking at the three realms. And here's how I define the three realms. The first realm is our conscious realm, where we are aware. We have focus and attention. We're self-aware. And we 
assign meanings to everything we do. So in our conscious day-to-day, -day, we, we tend to assess things in terms of their value, in terms of their meaning. And these things get stored in our timeline. And we have a left brain, right brain kind of analysis that it appears that the right brain is more for the present analyzing the information and that our left brain is more for cataloging, keeping track of the past and future. This all happens interactively. Then the next realm that we uh, have access to is our subconscious realm. Now, this goes on it's a, on a 7, 24-hour basis. It's always running, even when we're asleep. And the subconscious adheres to our internal map. So whatever we have encoded into our internal map, that's what the subconscious is going to be working with and acting on. And it's a very important to understand that for the subconscious, there is no past and future. Everything is now. And then finally, we'll look at the third realm, which I call the unconscious realm. And it's kind of a boundary between what you consider yourself and everything else. Some people like to call it the fabric of the reality, fabric of our universe. Some people call it a matrix. We live within this matrix. And time is infinite. It's persistent. So this matrix or this realm uh, will exist before we were here and it will exist after we go. And then finally, we'll take a look at something called the detachment three body centering exercise and we'll go through that together. So just a recap of our brainwave frequencies uh, review. We looked at four bands, the beta, the alpha, the theta, and the delta. And this graph is only showing you three bands, the alpha, theta, and delta, mainly because these are the ones that we are really concerned about when we meditate. So the beta is our day-to-day -day when we're busy doing things. And I might note here that if you are in a fight or flight mode, if you are anxious, you will be in beta and high beta. But assuming that you're meditating with your eyes open or closed, you will sink into alpha. And notice here, uh, under states of mind, that that's where relaxation begins. And you go into a light trance, a light meditation. And where sleep normally begins. And then when you go down into theta, that's where dreaming can begin. You go into a deeper meditation. And you can have vivid imagery. Notice here that on a physiological level, you start healing. You start generating the necessary hormones uh, to effect cellular, rep cellular repair. <clears throat> and then as you go in deeper meditation, you will go into delta. And this can take up to 30 to 40 minutes before you begin to feel that your body is going completely asleep. And in this state, you might feel like you can't move your body. You kind of lose body awareness. You might feel like your feet and legs are disappearing. Uh, it's quite, it can be the first time this happens. It can be quite a bit of a shock where you can no longer feel your legs. Well, this is okay. And it's not just a matter of your circulation being cut off. It's a matter of your nervous system shutting off your direct access to it because you're doing something very, very important. You're doing uh, major system repair. So when you go into deep delta, it is deep repair. Okay. Something to note here, and we're talking about frequencies, there's something called a two-phase electrical circuit, or two-phase uh, currents. And it's two phases. And we've been looking at one phase, but here you see two phases, and there's two highs. And you could think of this as the two energies in our body, the yin and the yang energy, the two nervous systems, the parasympathetic and sympathetic, they work independently. The two brains, they work independently. So there's two nervous systems, and in fact, there's two electrical systems running simultaneously in the body. This is observant all through nature, where you see something called the double helix. 
And this is because the two forces working together create this spiral, create this interaction. This is seen in the analysis of our DNA that is considered a double helix, the two forces merged together. Under uh, yoga and in terms of understanding the Kundalini energy, it's viewed as two snakes intertwining around each other. So the two forces, the male, female, yin and yang, in harmony, uh, forming this energy. So I wanted to show this so you understand that it's a balancing nature of the two forces, the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine, the hard and the soft. So we've been talking about the barriers to learning. And I mentioned that there were four enemies that will stop you. And there were four allies. And it happens that one of these enemies can become an ally. So in this first example, the first enemy that you will encounter is fear. But fear can be an ally. Fear can tell you where to look and where to go and what to avoid. It can be a real, real uh, ally for you. Or if you follow the, what this graph is suggesting, if you look at it and see false evidence appearing to be real and react to it, it will stop you in your tracks. The next we talked about was knowledge, is that people who feel that they have accomplished the knowledge no longer feel the need to research, no longer feel the need to look. They, in fact, experience premature closure because there's always more to learn. And the third enemy was clarity. People who have that sense that, uh, you know, everything's fine. Everything, maybe that false sense of security. So you always need to be open. You always need to be ready to have new experiences. And our final enemy or ally that is often discussed and talked about is in fact old age. And depending on how you see yourself as a uh, young spirit or an old spirit, in this picture some of you might see a young woman and some of you might see an old hag. Some might see both. It depends on how you look at life. And old age, as you get older, you will be faced with the problem and then having to make a decision is that, is it over? Are you done? Are you finished? And people who give in to old age stop. That's where they end. Okay, so you decide whether you want to keep growing and learning and sharing and giving. Okay, so we've been talking about uh, guided meditations and we've been doing something I call the shadow exercise. And you've had the number one uh, initial uh, video on doing a Qigong Tai Chi moves. And I think I will uh, produce another uh, little video on movement number two, and maybe combine one and two. But these are full brain movements. Okay? And the thing is that they follow a sequence and they take you through being able to do a movement on one side to being able to do it on the other side, to be able to do it together, and to be able to move independently. It gives you that, what they call, a fluid, flexible brain. So there are three qualities, as I mentioned, that these movements should be uh, accurate, soft and gentle, and requires concentration and visualiz visualization. So we'll be doing more on these because I think uh, this is sometimes called an applied meditation when you can... Uh, well, let me put it this way. It's one thing to be able to meditate and to achieve a high level, but but really what you want to be able to do is to walk and move and carry your meditation with you and share it. So applying your meditation involves moving and being active. Well, that's it for part one, and then we'll get back together. We'll do part two, and this will be the looking at the conscious states of the three realms and how they interact. So I appreciate you spending the time and going through this. So we will meet again and do part two of session six. Okay, we're going to do a guided meditation. So just sit comfortably in your chair, let your eyes close, and just listen to my voice. We're going to walk through your body. I'm going to mention a part of your body 
And what I'd like you to do is just take your awareness there. Don't do anything. Just go there in your mind and observe that part of your body. I'm going to start with your feet. Take your awareness to your feet, the soles of your feet, your toes, your ankles, tops of your feet, and even inside your foot. Take all your awareness to your feet. Still not moving or doing anything, take your awareness in both legs from your ankles to your knees. Just move your mind's eye and focus in on the area from your ankles to your knees. Calves, shin, skin. Okay, good. Now we're going to move your attention from your knees in both legs to your hips. From your knees to your hips. Become totally aware of that area. We're going to keep moving our attention now from your hips to your ribs, your stomach area, your lower back your sides, the whole ab abdominal area, from your hips to your ribs. You might be aware of your stomach moving in and out as you breathe. But again, just take your attention there. Now we'll move up to your rib cage, from your diaphragm up to your shoulders, the sides of your ribs, your chest, your upper back and again you might be aware of your lungs you might be aware of your heart just become totally aware of that area and again without changing anything we're just moving your attention move to your hands become totally aware of your palms of your hands your fingers tops of your hands, the sides. Good. We're going to move now from your wrists to your elbows. Just your attention. Leave everything else the way it is. From your wrists to your elbows. Again in both arms. We're going to move now and focus in on the area from your elbows to your shoulders. Just the area from your elbows to your shoulders. Let your attention now go to your shoulders, between your shoulder and your neck. Along your neck to the front of your neck and back of your neck and the sides. Your attention now goes up to your chin, in the cheeks, and around your mouth, and then around your nose and eyes, and your forehead and your eyebrows. Let your attention now move around to the sides of your head, your temples, and down to your ears, and around to the back of your head. Your attention now goes up to the very top of your head, right to the very crown of your head. Just focus on the very top of your head. Now to end this little meditation, what I'd like you to do is to focus on your entire body, all together from your toes, right to the top of your head, to the tips of your fingers. Your body all in one piece, comfortably sitting there. And at any time you feel like it, you can just let your eyes gently open. Welcome to the Internal Map of Reality, Session 5, Part 3, Timeline and Root Cause Events. 
we will be going through the final section talking about uh, the timeline and focusing on something that uh, I call uh, reconciliation of your timeline. Now, we have a natural understanding of a timeline as a ordered sequence of events. And some of the events on your timeline are just information. Other events on your timeline are transformative. From that point on, your life was different. Um, looking at the example here on the screen, you can see that these ones were all major events in this person's life. Um, when someone was born, when Jenny was born, obviously things were different from that point on. Moving to a new location when they moved to Missouri, going to a new school, a divorce, and then they have now indicated they, where they are presently on their timeline. Then they are planning on starting a middle school and then later on in their life, they're planning on going to Florida. So this is a nice little example of the timeline, but most of the events noted here are, I would say, relatively uh, significant and transformative. But your timeline also contains lots of little things that are not necessarily um, transformative, just information. The ones that we're interested in are the ones that are emotionally charged, the ones that uh, give you both a constructive and emotional energy to react and to do, and those that give you a, a not resourceful a charge of energy that maybe make you avoid or maybe make you fearful. These are all stored on your timeline. As I've been going on and talking, uh, the details are normally uh, uh, unaware. You're unaware or unconscious. They're in your uh, subconscious and is, are kept uh, unaware of them. Now, you might become suddenly aware of a past event that you didn't, couldn't remember, that never came up to your thought, and all of a sudden you could remember it. The doors were open. And you say, oh, geez, yeah, I remember when that happened, and that could be a thing. But a lot of the time, the experiences uh, that people describe are vague. They'll say, well, I can sort of know that there was something that happened, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, so those are very difficult. Another, another type of uh, root cause event that is very hard to work with are those that occurred when you were very young. Now, if you are very young before you were, say, a toddler or before you uh, went to school, your facility to, to, to store information with language would be very limited. So you would store them uh, mainly as uh, nonverbal frames, a visual of something, a tactile sensation, a sound, a word, um, so transformative experiences from early childhood tend to be uh, difficult to understand. So when you're looking and you say, well, I wonder why I feel this way about something, and you go back in your timeline, the information you may receive uh, may not be uh, logical or understandable in your present adult state. But that's not really a, a big deal because we can get around that. What we'll be looking for is something in your timeline that causes a significant mental state change or a behavioral change, either in a resourceful or unresourceful way. A lot of times, we uh, have something that is really difficult to resolve. Uh, it's outside of our, our capabilities. And I'll use the example of an addiction. Quite often, if you're trying to deal with, say, a habit-forming addiction, say drinking coffee or smoking cigarettes, the 
the drug itself, the caffeine or the nicotine itself, is a major, major reason why it's difficult. However, there are and can be, a lot of the times, other factors that are making it difficult to remove a chemical out of your life. And once these uh, things are dealt with, it then becomes easier to deal with the, uh, the chemical. So what, what is the process? The process is to go back and look at the initial event. So the theory is that if you are experiencing something in the present, that there is a root cause event that once cleared, once resolved, resolves your present state and will free you and allow you to act more appropriately. So let me repeat that again. A root cause event is an event that happened in the past that once resolved, once the issue of uh, past events event is neutralized, it will then no longer limit you in the present or future. So we know that we cannot get into a time machine and go back to the past and make changes. We can't do that. But what we can do is that we can manipulate the frame. So remember now, this past event, this root cause event that's limiting you in the present is stored as a frame in your past. So what we can do is we can request your subconscious to modify that frame in such a way as to release it. Some people are able to just identify the frame and to ask their subconscious to just let it go. And there's a whole um, process, a technique or a treatment approach where people learn to just release locked emotions associated with a past event. And if you can do that, fantastic. Then you no longer need to go any further. You see, because once the emotion is released, then uh, you're free. Another way of dealing with a root cause event is to look at your state of mind and your state of physical being prior to that event happening. So prior to the event, life was normal and everything was as it should be. Then there was the event and then there was life after the event. If you could go back to your life prior to the event, you can recapture your qualitative state and then use that as a paintbrush to repopulate your future frames with that state of mind. So when you go to a position in your timeline prior to that event, you get to a frame, right? And that frame has submodalities. Well, you can use those submodalities to repopulate the future frames associated with that root cause event. So that's another way of cleansing your um, timeline. Now, again, remember, you don't have to deal with the actual event. You don't even have to re remember the details of that event. So what we will be doing when we do the timeline cleanse is we will be um, using a timeline meditation, a guided meditation, to uh, disassociate ourselves from our timeline, to move away from the timeline and to see it is off in the distance. And then we will traverse, travel along your timeline to the past and identify where generally the frames are located that are associated with that event. And again, remember, we don't really even have to look at the event. We don't even have to do anything with that event. We just have to you know, get a general sense 
of where that event happened. So uh, in the meditation, what we'll be doing, we'll be just identifying whether the event was before you were born or after you were born. If it was after you were born, were you uh, preschool or after preschool? And that's about as narrow as we have to get. If it was before you were born, was it something that happened um, while you were in the different stages of your mother's pregnancy? Was it in the first trimester, second, or the third? Where was it in the process of your development as a fetus? And again, this may sound strange, but you, you can use your creative imagination and say, well, maybe something happened and you can just accept the first thing that comes. It may not be right. It may be wrong. It's an impression. So your subconscious will give you an impression. And this imp impression uh, may be something just to say, well, you know, I kind of feel like something happened during the period uh, in the early stages of my fetal development. Or you might feel that something happened while you were while you were being born, you know, that there was some kind of trauma. Again, this is just a feeling. You do not have to know the details. Just get a general feeling. So what did we do? We identify whether it was before you were born or whether it was after you were born. We can even go past further. You may say, well, actually, I think it was something happened in a before I was even conceived, something in my past dealing with my uh, parents before I was born, dealing with my grandparents or my great, something that goes back, you know, generations. And again, you don't have to be specific. You don't have to nail it down. Just get a general feeling. And this is where people have some difficulty is just trusting their subconscious with the initial feeling. So when we do the meditation and uh, ask you to uh, think about when it, this root cause event may have been, uh, may have happened, when this transformative experience may have happened, just allow your subconscious to take you there. Allow your subconscious to say, well, you know, it happened in a past life. Oh, no, it happened when you were young. You don't, again, have to know anything about it. Just trust your subconscious and your subconscious will identify the uh, general area, general thing. So the main thing that we need to uh, do is identify what the limitations are today. You need to be very, very cognizant of what things you feel you are being restricted from today. You don't need to know the details of your root cause event, but what you do need to know is, hey, I have difficulty doing this. You don't need to know why at this point. You just need to know, I have difficulty meeting new people. I have difficulty with heights. I have difficulty with being alone. I have difficulty with being in the dark. Whatever it is that you feel is restricting you, is limiting you today, just get a really good sense for what it is that you would like to uh, to deal with in the in the present state or in the future. What things are limiting you today? Now, there will be a root cause event, but you do not need to know what that root cause event is in any kind of detail. Now, when we do the, root, the uh, timeline uh, meditation to clean up your timeline, um, that you will be uh, receiving a, um, a guided meditation uh, video uh, as, a, as a, those in the Patreon group. And uh, I'll be encouraging you to run that several times, to uh, listen to the guided meditation several times and follow it. And then enough so that you can do the guided meditation on your own. And whenever you feel that limitation in the present, or whenever you feel that you're being limited to do things in the future, just do this little timeline meditation to help release any of the emotional content that's stored in a frame from the past. And again, 
you do not need to know the details of that frame. You just need to know how to request the subconscious to release it. So what you'll be learning in this timeline meditation <clears throat> is a technique of requesting your subconscious to release the emotional content of a previous frame, right? So your subconscious will do all the detail and your subconscious will continue to protect you from the content in that frame if it is important to keep you protected. So just trust the fact that this information that your subconscious is not letting you be aware of, it's because it may be uh, viewed as being information that might in some way uh, make you re-experience that trauma. That's perfectly okay. You can leave that information where it is. Leave it in the past. What we need to do, that's the information, right? What we need to do is to release the emotions. So that's what we'll be doing in that timeline cleanse exercise. As I said, you'll be receiving the video. And then um, hopefully we'll be able to have some uh, discussions, live discussions to talk about it and carry it through. So enjoy that, that exercise. Now the next session that we'll be doing, we'll be going and looking at values. We'll be taking a deep dive into values and the hierarchy of values that we have and learning how to structure our internal list, right? It's our internal wish list. Once that is organized, once we've cleaned up our timeline and neutralize any of the root cause events that are limiting us today, and we've done that. Then when we organize our value hierarchy, we put the things in the order that they should be, that will give you a much cleaner approach to your future. So you, you'll find that uh, the exercises and the steps that we'll be taking in the uh, values session to be really, really helpful. So that's it for uh, your timeline exercise exercises and your timeline instructions, session five. I hope you found that of value. Again, don't hesitate to reach out should you have any questions. And we'll see you in the next session. And welcome to exercise session number 12 and uh, this uh, exercise is about your timeline and we're going to be going into how to actually clean up your timeline the importance of the timeline uh, has been discussed over the the number of different sessions we've had and we're about to wrap up the timeline and all of the timeline filters and all that with this exercise. Now, the way I'm going to break it up is that initially what I will do is go through the process of cleaning the timeline and then I will issue a separate little video with the actual guided meditation in it. So in this video, you'll learn what the cleanse process is about and how it's done. And then um, the Patreon, if you're a Patreon member, you will receive uh, the actual video meditation separately. Okay, so let's get into it. So we already talked about the fact that we maintain in our subconscious a timeline. And normally we don't pay attention to this timeline, but we can refer to it. Now, the thing here is that we'll be talking about a root cause event that after this event, you were transformed, you were changed, okay, significantly. So there's some event that afterwards you became emotionally charged such that you behaved differently. So it affected your mental state and it affected your behavior. Now, these 
events are typically uh, suppressed because we don't like to remember negative things or we put dressing on it, we put chocolate cake around them and whatever. But they go into our subconscious and we are mostly unaware, unconscious of these root cause events. But we can, we can get to them. The most important thing is that if we can go to that root cause event and neutralize it, then that will free you in the present time. And these root cause events tend to be very difficult to resolve. Why? Because they get suppressed and they are mainly held in your unconscious area of your greater self. So, what do you do to cleanse your timeline? Well, first you've got to find that initial event. Then, once you've found the initial event, you can then move to a point in time before that event happened. And guess what? Prior to that root cause event ever happening, you were just fine. Everything about you in regards to this event had not happened, and therefore you were in good shape. So basically what the cleansing process is, is to identify the event, and by identify the event, I don't mean relive it. I just mean just be aware of roughly when the event happened, roughly what it's about, but more importantly, identifying what effect it has for you in the current time frame. What's limits you and what is that connected to? And that's the tricky part that we need to trust our subconscious about. Because our subconscious can take us to that uh, initial event and can allow us to then experience what it was like before the event. Once we have reestablished our normal state prior to this event, we can then release any emotions associated with it. And there's a number of ways we can do this, but we will at all times during the meditation stay disassociated. So you will not even react to the uh, emotional content because you'll be removed from it. You'll be dis dissociated from it. You'll be distant, moved away from it. And then uh, with a power frame, um, this is a special kind of prior power frame. It's an action power frame, an action that you do to uh, release the emotions. The thing is that, and I mentioned this before, is that you will have to practice this cleanse sufficient number of times to completely clean your timeline. Um, what I found personally was that the first time I did the, the cleanse, uh, some, of, some of the content was, was released, and I felt about 20% uh, better, but there's still that 80% left. And then each time I ran the timeline for myself, that percentage dropped and there was less and less until you get to a point where there's maybe only 60 or 50% of the emotion remain in terms of the amount of charge in it. And then you release that. And then at some point, you've reduced the stress or the sensitivity of that to the point where you can look at it, you can re and examine it without any emotional reaction. You have released it and you are freed. So for some people, this can happen quickly, and for others, it may take time. We did a research project at St. Mary's uh, with this, and what we found was that the people who uh, practiced more and had more awareness of the meditation component had better success with this. So this, with conjunction with your other meditative work, has many, many benefits. So the timeline meditation, well, it's a guided meditation, and there's some basic steps. We will first find out what direction, and use our direction finder, what direction our past is. And that's so that we can travel there. So we need to know what direction. Is it in front of us? Is it above us? If it's behind us, where is the past? Is it to our left? And we will 
disassociate ourselves from our timeline and travel back to a point in your timeline where this root cause event occurred. We won't relive it. We won't even go down it. We'll be well, 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 way, way, way disassociated from it. You're looking at it from a distance, and there's no way any emotional charge can affect you. And we have a little technique uh, to uh, capturing some of the information that's in that root cause event. And um, that's a, a little bit of a, a magical trick that, since you are in charge, you can do. So we gather some information, and then we go to prior to, prior to the root cause event. And we allow ourselves to become associated with that, to emerge ourselves in what it feels like prior to that event ever happening. And holding on to that feeling, we then move forward on, onto our timeline, back above that root cause event, and then we can release the uh, limiting emotions and relive the original normal state that we had prior to. And then we can move forward along our timeline, cleansing it as we go. So the key to make this meditation work is that you really do have to trust your subconscious and you don't need to know everything. When we ask for your subconscious to take you to where this root cause event is, just trust that it does. Now, you may not know, you may not see or hear or smell anything. You may just know that your root that your root cause event has been identified and found by your subconscious. You don't need to know the details consciously in order for this to work. So the key is to trust your subconscious and to repeat it frequently. So this, this resolution, you know, um, we, uh, to go through the steps again, we identify the time frame, we locate it, and get enough information from that root cause event to be able to know that it is the right one. And then we go to a time prior to that event and realize that we don't have any of this emotional restrictions or limitations. And we restore that prior state along your timeline. And we release any of the emotions that were originally associated with that root cause event. Now, we can choose to retain some knowledge. Now, in every experience, there's, there's some knowledge and there's some experience or emotion. So you may keep pertinent or valuable knowledge and store that someplace that's of value. And so this uh, meditation uh, only takes a few minutes. And once you listen to the tape and repeat it a few times, you should be able to conduct the meditation uh, on your own. And that's what I found is that after I listened to uh, the tape a few times, I had enough information about how to do the uh, meditation that I could do it. Whenever I felt that limitation, I would activate almost like a power frame, right? I'd, act, I'd activate this timeline cleanse and I would immediately go back and if there was any of that emotion left, I'd let it go. And remember, it probably won't, it might, but it probably won't all leave at once. It can take some time. Okay, so that is the introduction to the meditation. And as I say, the Patreon, you will receive a separate video uh, guiding you through the actual meditation. So enjoy and see you in the next session. Hello and welcome to the short little video bonus topic 11B011. We do these short little videos about topics that are related to the introduction to meditation and related to the internal map of reality that I personally feel are worth it to do a separate little video. And sometimes I'll do these same topic, but in different ways or stressing different aspects. So today's topic is a big one. 
and it's called Self-Talk, The Monkey Brain. <clears throat> now, this is a variation of some of the messages I get from people regarding the meditative, like when they're learning to meditate, they might say, um, I can't stop thinking. And I hear that one a lot. I can't meditate because I can't stop thinking. Well, there's a big issue there because no one wants you to stop thinking. The idea of meditation is to enhance your thinking. And uh, as we talked about in brainwave frequencies, that when you first initially do meditation, you slip into alpha, which is very quiet. But then you start to slip into theta, which is much more active. So you would actually notice an increase in uh, mental activity, and that might include a lot of self-talk. The self-talk I'm talking about today has to do with what you normally would experience in a day-to-day -day, uh, experience. It may also happen when you meditate, but uh, the one that I think is uh, quite dramatic is the type of self-talk we have on a regular basis. Now, this is sometimes referred to as monkey brain or an overactive brain that is really just monkey business. What is it doing? It's just sort of causing trouble, stirring up like a monkey on your back. Uh, if you've been to some countries where monkeys are allowed to roam free, they like they steal your hat, they'll take your purse, they'll, you know, they're just really into everything. Well, this self-talk is kind of like that. So we want to talk about what that is and then look into some of the problems and issues that people, myself included, everyone will experience. So there are issues with self-talk. We want to fix those. There is a process with the subconscious that uh, if I haven't mentioned it in great, in great detail yet, I will and will be repeating it. And it's this. With every frame that your subconscious presents to you, you will have the opportunity to accept or reject. With every um, frame, and particularly the frames I'm thinking of are the ones that will make you change your behavior or change your mental state. Before it's activated, you have the opportunity to accept reject. It's your choice. Now, if you don't take that ability to accept or reject, the subconscious will act on it. So it's kind of like what they used to call uh, reverse uh, negative advertising, where you get an ad uh, or an email or a letter saying, if you don't respond to this letter or this email, you're uh, charge, your monthly fee for whatever it might be, your cell phone is going to go up and it's going to include these services. So your subconscious is very good at that. It will allow you to reject or accept. This leads us into how can you make your self-talk a power frame? Because now you know that the words that you hear are one of the modes of thinking. But there are six modes of thinking, right? So you can incorporate the knowledge of that to make a power frame. If you have a, a very persistent self-talk that's that you're trying to overcome, you may need to uh, call on your other modes of thinking to uh, subdue it or to change it. And finally, uh, a big one is repetition. Now, we mentioned about why repeating your meditation practice uh, as frequently as possible is what builds strength. Doing anything frequently builds more neural pathways. It's all about your nervous system. So every time you repeat something, you strengthen it. And this also applies to your self-talk. If you are constantly repeating uh, positive self-talk to yourself, it's going to grow on you. It may not feel uh, natural at first, but it will grow. So let's go into it. So monkey brain, and I have our friend here, uh, Homer, and he um, has a monkey brain. And some of the features of the monkey brain is that 
It is uh, obviously a verbal for most people, although there was study uh, done recently where a lot of people don't even recognize that they have verbal self-talk until they are actually uh, asked to look or listen. So it's, a, it's normally a verbal dialogue. Now, it can be in other forms. It can be a physical sensation you get. It can be a sound that you hear. It could be a visual thing that you get. But for most people, it's words. You hear the words, and it's frequent. It happens for some people all the time. Now, you have to listen for it. If you pay attention through your uh, self-awareness and self-meditation, you will become aware of this uh, dialogue, and you will begin to notice that, wow, I really say that to myself a lot. Here's the dig. Often, for some people, it's negative. And it's the negative self-talk that we want to address. If you have positive self-talk and your self-talk is really self-affirming, hey, leave it alone. It's great. You know, you may want to bump it up some more, but if you uh, have a, a positive frame that you're projecting, great. But if you don't, we want to be able to correct that so you can be more effective. The thing is that it may appear that this self-talk is irrelevant. You might think, well, why am I thinking this now? But it's not. It's usually tied back to something in your past along your timeline. And we're going to talk about that uh, later. So what are the problems and issues? Well, when it is um, a negative thing or, or a self-lowering um, of your self-esteem, uh, and you hear people, if you listen, you'll, you'll hear these, I'm stupid, you know, no one likes me. I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that. I'm an idiot, right? And you'll quite often will hear it if you listen to the words in the voice of someone that has authority. And this is just listen to the voice. And so what we be, we'll be talking about later uh, in our um, when we talk about strategies for motivation is that when you have self-talk that's uh, very limiting, you can change that voice to one that is um, one that you won't respond to. So the thing is with these, they can distract you. You can be ab about to do something that's really important, and all of a sudden you're distracted because you have this self-talk that takes you away from your focus. And as I indicated before, is that these self-talk, particularly the negative ones, the ones that have issues, go back to a root cause event. And so we've been talking about root cause events a lot, and we'll be doing the, the timeline cleanse exercise to help neutralize the root cause events, because they, they will be persistent. And the thing to understand is that whether you are consciously aware of the self-talk, you probably are repeating it. If you hear it once, there's a good likelihood you're hearing it or saying it to yourself a lot. So what can you do? Well, the subconscious is very, very kind. The subconscious really wants to uh, help you and wants you to heal. So what the subconscious will do, it will present to you a frame and will give you a moment to accept or reject that frame. So you might get a frame that says, I can't do that. Your subconscious will give you the opportunity to take that and say, no, I can do that. But it's just brief, and it's only if you're paying attention. If you're not paying, if you're distracted and you're not paying attention, then the frame that the subconscious presents to you will activate. And again, this goes back to our root cause, because the subconscious is really just trying to protect you. So it will be constantly trying to prevent you from re-experiencing, say, a uh, root cause event. It doesn't want you to experience that again. So it will be presenting uh, frames to you to help you avoid it. Um, so this persistence is what's important. But the thing is, is that if you are persistent and uh, reject, if it's a negative self-talk, you can reject it and change it. So how do you do that? Well, 
you use your power frames. And we've been talking about power frames all along. And if you haven't been working with power frames, start working with them. You can go back and look at the power frame uh, modules and uh, they'll be in the, a lot of the uh, bonus topics and in the exercises. But if you want to install uh, some self-talk, it's perfectly okay. So you, how do you do it? Well, you pick a desired outcome. If you want to be successful, if you want to be uh, happy, if you want to be loved, if you want to find a new job, if you want to find an, another place to live, whatever it might be that you would want to do, well, you focus on that and focus on the desired outcome you want. Remember when we talked about the roads of the road, the, the rules of the road? is you steer where you want to go, you look where you want to go. If you're looking at the center line, that's where you will steer. If you're looking at the guardrail, that's where you will steer. So steer where you're looking, okay? And don't be afraid to take a chance. Trust yourself, right? Love yourself. Take that chance to really, really, really project what you want. What's the best possible outcome? Why? Shoot for something less. You know, so if you want some, you want a new job, well, like think about you having the, the number one most inspiring job that you could ever have and see yourself doing it, right? Project that out there, right? Take a chance. So it is connected to your future goals. So if you have something you want, you might have self-talk telling you you can't get it or you won't get it, right? Be persistent, be relentless. And every time you have that self-talk, you know, reject it or accept it, depending on whether it's beneficial or resourceful. If it's not resourceful, you can change it and reject it and replace it with a power thought, with a power frame of what you want. Now, I can't stress this enough, is that initially when you're doing this, when you're trying to change a self-talk um, um, itinerary or self-talk frame, it is not going to want to go easily. It will come back. But you need to be stronger and more relentless than that. You need to show your subconscious that you mean business by always rejecting it if it's a negative self-talk. Always replacing it, right? Change the can't to a can, and you have to do it repeatedly. But then, at some point, it goes away. At some point, you've changed. We're going to be talking about the change process later on, but right now, just understand that this isn't a one-time event. You have to do it every time. And I often say the difference between someone who is successful and someone who fails is that the successful person does not stop. They continue. They are relentless and they keep going. So be repetitive with your positive self-talk. Be, re be relentless. Be, be that warrior, right? And take it to the next level. Okay, well, that's our chit-chat for the uh, bonus topic. And, uh, you know, if you have questions about it, you know, feel free to reach out and email me. Or if you're a Patreon, you can just message me through the Patreon system. So have fun, and we will see you in the next session. Well, thank you for participating in tonight's premiere number nine. And uh, stay tuned for our Sunday preview. And uh, on the Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern, I uh, have a short video just giving you the highlights of what to expect for the upcoming Premiere, Premiere 10. Again, thank you for participating, and we'll see you in the next session.